we have a government that is out of control and not just for spending. Um, I, I would agree with that statement as well. Um, what do you plan to do about all of the violations that are going on in health and human services, which are, I, I, I mean, just, just plain immeasurable? The health and, I serve on the Health and Human Services Committee. Mm -hmm. We are the Committee of Jurisdiction. I am appalled at what has been happening, and we're trying to tackle this head on. It is not easy digging into the weeds and trying to see the source. There, uh, there are significant concerns that stem back to, really back to the King administration. There was a company called Maximus. Maximus is still in existence today, although the CME doesn't use them anymore. What their purpose was, was to maximize the federal match so that we could sort of creatively bill, and my work would be fraudulently bill, our federal government in order to draw down the federal match. As soon as Mary Mayhew became the commissioner, she discovered all kinds of interesting things that basically mean that the state of Maine owes basically hundreds of millions of dollars back to the federal government. We have a document in writing from August 16th of 2002 warning us about this in one, one area that we were fraudulently billing. And that document was put in a drawer and ignored. From who? From the King administration on through the Baldacci administration. Right, but I mean... Any bo the, so the Department of Health and Human Services ignored it. But I mean, who, who sent it to them? The federal government. Yeah, okay, yeah. That caught us. And then I don't know why on the federal end, if someone says, hey, you're billing me fraudulently, you've got to stop, why they don't just stop the payment. I don't understand why the feds continue to give us the match. We continue to bill, and everyone just sort of looks the other way. It doesn't make sense to me. But that's the kind of thing we're dealing with, trying to figure out who, what, how, why, when. And it... Um, that's just one small example. That was something called disproportionate share, which was billing for the prison population as Medicaid services, which they did not qualify for. And that we got caught in 2002. I don't even know when we began that billing process. So that, by caught, I mean we received in writing notification, yeah. but it wasn't until Mary Mayhew stumbled, uh, employee Jenny Boyden stumbled across it in this death drawer that it even came to light, and that was this past year. So that's just one small example of the, the depth of the problem is enormous. So, so they were billing the federal government for Medicaid services to inmates? For the prison population at Dorothy and Dix and um, at Riverview, but basically Dorothy and Dix. So that population of people, we were receiving a federal match billing the federal government for services that they did not qualify we were never supposed to bill for those services. Uh -huh. This is, but we've also done it with double billing. We have billed um, for children's services for both through the Department of Education and the Department of Health and Human Services. So we bill the federal government twice for the same procedure and receive the federal match twice. Oh. Well, yeah. That was when we, that was fresh out of the gate with Mary Mayhew. We had that. Then we also, I mean, it just goes on. We have, and we have had to apply and ask for forgiveness and said, basically, uh, whoopsies, we're sorry, we double billed, we over billed, we billed incorrectly, we weren't supposed to bill for this. Uh, why, why isn't Brenda Harvey in jail? <laughs> Good question. She should, should be right there with Paul Violet. Yeah. So, oh, I, I far beyond. I understand. I, I wish more people were paying attention and asking questions like you because you try to get the message out and it just seems to not be of great interest, I guess. Well, do, do, you know what so, the problem, do you know what the problem is? 
people have spent so many decades with the government having hearing problems and nobody listening that it's become, it, it has become, you know, so commonplace that nobody even notices it. 